The third elasticity is cross elasticity of demand. This time what we're interested in is how demand for one product changes when there's a change in the price of another product. The two products are related. So the formula, percentage change in quantity demanded of one good divided by percentage change in price of another good. So the example I'm going to do is between Xbox consoles and Xbox games. Let's assume the price of Xbox consoles decreases from £250 to £200. And as a result, uh, there's an increase in the sales of Xbox games from 300000 to 400000 a year. So, we need to do the figures to do the calculation. So the first thing is you work out the percentage change in quantity demanded using the uh, same formula, difference over original multiplied by 100. So, we go from selling 300,000 games to 400,000 games. So the difference is plus 100,000 over where you started, 300,000, multiplied by 100. The percentage change in price, you started at 250 and you went to 200. So it's minus 50 over where you started, 250, multiplied by 100. Do the maths. And it comes out at plus 33 on the top, minus 20 on the bottom. Uh, calculate that, and it comes at minus 1.6. So that's the second stage. First stage, know the formula. Second stage, be able to do the calculation. Third stage, say something about what it means. Remember, you have to comment on the sign and the size. So the first thing to comment on is the sign. Now... This should be common sense. If you've got Xbox games and Xbox consoles, they are things that go together. So the minus sign indicates that the good are complements. Complements. The 1.6, we judge against the number one. 1.6 is greater than one. So what we have here is a cross uh, elasticity relationship which is elastic okay it's an elastic relationship the thing the 1.6 means that they are close complements we know that for every 1% change in the price of consoles there'll be a 1.6% change in uh, demand for games right so what use could this be to a business? Well, if you know that um, products are complements, you can develop a strategy. So you could sell more games without having to alter the price of games. You know that if you decrease the price of a console, people are going to buy the console, and in the coming months and years, they will buy more and more games. So you may be willing to lose a little bit of revenue and profit on your consoles, but make it up on the games. You would only do this if this number was quite large. If it was 0.1, it would make no sense. You decrease the price of your uh, consoles by, say, 10%, and if it was 0.1, you'd only gain 1% sale in the game. So you'd only do it if it is a close, elastic relationship. The other possibility when looking at cross-elasticity of demand is not that the goods are complements, but the goods are substitutes. So here's an example of this. A 10% increase in the price of Xbox consoles leads to a 17% increase in the sale of PS3 consoles. So these are two different ways of playing arcade games, therefore they are substitutes. If you put the figures in, percentage change in quantity demanded of one good, in this case PS3, is plus 17. Change in price of Xbox is plus 10. Plus 17 over plus 10 gives you plus 1.7. The plus means the two goods are substitutes. The 1.7 is greater than 1. And this means that the two goods are close substitutes. The bigger the number here, the closer the two products are as substitutes. What use would that be to a business? Well, this business would know that it has a very close substitute and that if it raises its price, it's likely to lose a lot of sales to the substitute. If this figure was less than one, let's say it was 0.6, then they could raise their prices by 10%, but they would only lose 6% to the 
to the competitor. But once again, you need to take into account all those things I mentioned previously. How old is this uh, data? Was it, um, how was it obtained? Uh, was it obtained by market research? And if so, did they ask the right people? Um, so the same, draw, uh, not drawbacks, the same criticisms still apply. The last elasticity you need to know anything about in AS economics is price elasticity of supply. First thing, the formula. Percentage change in quantity supply over percentage change in price. This time, what we're asking is, if demand for a product increases, can the firm readily increase supply? Will it be able to supply a lot more as the market changes, or will it not? Well, it depends really upon three things. The first is the level of stock a firm has. In the lead up to Christmas, firms have got lots of stocks of toys uh, in their warehouses. And so when then more orders come in from the toy shops, they can just send them out and they can easily meet the increased demand. Secondly, you can ask yourself, can the firm expand production? Can it easily uh, get more workers? Can they easily be put to work or do they need a long time of training? Can people work overtime? Can they get more raw materials? If the answer to these questions is yes, then supply would be able to be expanded easily. And the third thing is the time period being considered. In the short run, most firms find it very difficult to increase supply. But give them a few weeks or months, then they'll be able to do it much more easily. So, you have to be able to do the numerical example, of course. So let's take an example. The price of a product increases by 3%. The scenario to begin with is that the firm has a lot of stock and so can increase supply by 6%. If you do the calculation, price elasticity of supply, percentage change in quantity supply, plus 6, over percentage change in price, plus 3, gives you plus 2. Now, price elasticity of supply is always positive because as the price goes up, quantity supply goes up. So, just like with price elasticity of demand, you forget the plus sign. This time, the number is 2. You compare it to 1, it is greater than 1, therefore, supply is elastic. It means that supply can respond rapidly to a change in market conditions. But the stock runs out. When the stock runs out, the firm can now only increase supply by getting a bit of overtime work. So let's say that it can increase it by 2%. Now the formula would be plus 2 over plus 3 gives you 0.6. Now supply would be inelastic. It would not be able to respond by as much as the change in price. So what use would knowing price elasticity of supply be to a firm? Well, to be honest, I don't think it would be as useful as knowing the elasticity of demand figures. But it might be good for the firm to know how it could respond in given circumstances. If somebody came and told the firm that its uh, elasticity of supply was inelastic, and it was in a market that was fairly steady and constant, they more than likely wouldn't mind. But if they were in a rapidly changing market where firms get orders at very short notice, they may be worried. Maybe they'd want to put in contingency plans, agree with unions that workers could work overtime, agree with their suppliers that they'd be able to produce more for them at short notice. Once again, the usual criticisms apply. Is the figure an estimate? How old is it? How is it gathered? And so on.